Thanks for joining this Bible study of Lifeway Study, the book of Genesis, chapter 20 to 50. This is session 11. The title is Revealed, and the text is Genesis 41, verse 14 to 21, and verse 33 to 37. The lesson summary statement is God reveals His plans when we trust Him. I'm using the Explore the Bible uh, suggestion about lost hikers, and we'll use that to lead into the lesson. And then after that, I'm going to ask him to look at the summary statement, and, which says, God reveals his plans when we trust him. So the question doesn't say God reveals his plans how uh, we trust him. So my question is, how does God reveal his plans to us? And of course, there will be obvious things like the Bible and prayer and worship, uh, Sunday school, uh, fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ, <clears throat> but there's things like books, uh, uh, maybe researching on the internet, uh, friends, maybe past experiences, uh, discernment, those kinds of things. With Joseph, it was with dreams. But then this says when uh, God reveals his plans, when we trust him. Do you have an example uh, in the class when God revealed his plans, uh, when the when the person or your church stepped out in trust to him. We've uh, started our new building program in 2015. It seems like an amazing time ago. And it started talking with the architects and those kinds of things. We began a fundraising program in 2016. We went through that and concluded in 2019. We were short financially and we wondered about what to do, but before we could ever formulate a plan, COVID struck, and that just took us off the scene for nearly a year. And during that time, the church continued to give in wonderful and strong ways, and our expenses went way down, and we were very strong financially, and we went back into a second uh, building campaign. And, ha and there's a sense in which had COVID not happened, uh, we would not have been as financially strong to go through. But what the church had done is it made the decision, this is what God wanted us to do, and we trusted Him, and He revealed His plans to us. There may be others that you uh, w will have examples of, but, but something along that lines that illustrates the point, God reveals His plans when we trust Him. Notice, the, it, it talks about you trusting Him and then as you do that, he reveals his plans. That is the way God operates all the way through the Bible. Now the transition statement says, Joseph must have wondered what God was doing. God was still at work getting ready for something Joseph could never have imagined. So we go to this first point, uh, credit given, uh, verses 14 through 16. God reveals his plan when we trust him. H have any of you ever met uh, a U.S. president. I know of one member in my class who met President Jimmy Carter, but have you ever met a U.S. president or maybe any other world leader uh, that we see about and have learned uh, and seen on television or, or maybe some famous personality? And, and in order to meet that person, were there any special preparations that you had to do or were there any particular protocols that you had to follow? Well, you'll see that take place in this text. Verse 14, Then Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and they quickly brought him from the dungeon. This is the first time in this chapter that Joseph's name is mentioned. All the time before it refers to him uh, uh, in some other fashion, but never by his name. And so, so from this point on, Joseph is going to be the main character. And what you see is everything is in a rush. So they sent for Joseph and they quickly brought, almost, it's almost the idea of they ran Joseph uh, from the dungeon. And, it's, and then there's this, uh, the commentators say there's almost this staccato kind of statement in the next day. He shaved, he changed his clothes, and went to Pharaoh. So it, it's the, the way the text is written is to show this hurriedness. But, but even before he could get into the presence of Pharaoh, there still were protocols. He had to be prepared in order to be acceptable 
uh, he shaved. The Hebrews saw the beard as something that was honorable. The Egyptians saw beards as something that belonged to the gods. And so they shaved. Uh, you'll see sometimes picture of the Pharaoh and he has this uh, strange little device attached to his chin that he has strapped on it to represent a beard. And since he is viewed as deity, uh, that's what it's supposed to convey. And then the fact that he changed clothes, there's a transformation that's taking place here. Verse 15, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream and no one can interpret it. Now imagine that, that's, that's a big challenge. Joseph has no idea why he's there, but when he gets there, uh, he's, he's going to be asked to do something that no one else can do. And then uh, he goes on to say, but I have heard it said about you that you can hear a dream and interpret it. The idea is you can, you can be told a dream and you also know the message of the dream. And Joseph very, uh, uh, powerfully says, I am not able to. It's, it's actually one word. It's succinct, it's pungent. It's one word in Hebrew that says, not me. Joseph answered Pharaoh, it is God. And he uses the word Elohim. He doesn't use the covenant name because he's talking to a pagan. He uses the name of God that speaks about the God of sovereignty and power who created the world. That's the one that has the ability to interpret dreams. It is God who will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. That word favorable is the word shalom. And it means that his answer is going to bring you peace. It's going to bring you wholeness. It doesn't necessarily mean that his message is a, is a good message, a prosperous message, but, his, but this message is going to bring peace to your anxiety. It's going to pacify your disturbed spirit. You're going to understand what the dream means. Because you believe God is in charge and has a plan, you deal with difficulties very different than those who don't trust God. Since you trust God, what has he revealed about death of loved ones? And what I'm wanting to develop there is, is we have a whole list of things as Christians we understand about the afterlife. Now, we believe those things because we trust God. And because of our trust in God, God has revealed these things to us through the person of Jesus Christ. When God reveals His plan, God reveals His plan when we trust Him. The second point that I want you to see is uh, God is cows consumed, uh, chapter 41, verse 17 to 21. Again, I want to read through the text and give some explanation. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, in my dream, I was standing on the bank of the Nile. Now, that's more than just saying I was standing on the bank of a creek or a river. <clears throat> the Nile was uh, a perplexity to the ancient man. First of all, it flowed to the north and all other rivers flowed to the south. It, it also flooded in the summer and that's not when most rivers would flood, of course. <clears throat> The Egyptians saw it as a source of life and they gave it a, the value of a deity because of that. And so when he's standing on the bank of the Nile, this is a very important place for him. And he says, when seven well-fed, healthy looking cows came from the Nile and grazed among the reeds. That phrase, healthy looking, is the same phrase that's used to talk about Rachel being uh, beautiful in face and in form. It's the same thing that's used to talk about Joseph in uh, verse 6 when he's referred to as uh, handsome and well-built. These cattle had a good appearance and they were in good form. And they come up from the Nile. One of the ways the cows would get relief from the heat and from insects is they, like a hippopotamus, they would go and they just stay in the water and then they'd come out of the water and then they would go and graze. And that's what he's seeing take place here. And they're, they're beautiful cows, they're healthy cows. They're, they're perfect in, in that sense. Verse 19, after them, 
seven other cows, weak, very sickly, and thin. It's the worst kind of cow you could imagine. Uh, it's, they're shocking in their, uh, their poor condition. You've never seen cows like this in Egypt. Well, they come up out of the river as well. And he says, I've never seen such sickly ones as these in all of the land of Egypt. Then the thin, sickly cows ate the first seven uh, well-fed cows. Now that's a shocking picture just in and of itself because cows aren't carnivorous, but, he's, but it's talking about this famine that's coming. And when they had devoured them, you could not tell that they had devoured them. There was, there was no evidence, no benefit to what had taken place. And their appearance was as bad as it had been before. Then I woke up. Now the application point for this truth in your leader's guide on page 127 says, believers should pay attention to ways God reveals His plan. And we've talked about ways that God would reveal His plan when we began the lesson, Bible study and prayer and worship, fellowship with believers, Sunday school attendance. But I want to talk about some other ways in which God uh, God will reveal his ways to us. I have uh, an article entitled Five Surprising Ways God Reveals His Plan for Life. Five Surprising Ways God Reveals His Plan for Life by, by Dr. Jason Robinson. I found this on the internet. And what he does is he lifts these five ways that God will reveal his plan to us. Uh, he uses the word steps, seasons, speed bumps and stop signs, setups, and stillness. And if you're interested, you can go and look at that article and read it. And it's just a different way in which in life God can speak to us and show us His way. And what I'm going to do is take those five points that I've read and I'm going to break, cut those up and give, give them an assignment to each uh, table and ask the people to discuss it for a few minutes and to give me illustrations of, uh, example, uh, steps. He says God has ordered steps. When we look at a ladder, it has several steps. We do not need to get frustrated with all the steps or even try to skip past any of them. Therefore, purpose and each step will teach us things that will be needed in the future. Take your time and learn all you can each step of the way. Now, he doesn't give any illustrations of this. He just gives this explanation. So what I'm asking the class to do is in each of these, the steps and the seasons and the speed bumps and so forth, stop signs, I'm asking them to provide the class with an example. What would be an example of steps, how God has ordered our steps? And, and uh, that is a way for us to learn uh, how God can speak to us and lead us in, in His ways. So I hope that will be of a benefit and at least get them into a discussion about it because what I'm really driving at is God reveals His plan when we trust Him. Now the third point is plan defined. Again, I want to go through the text and give some explanation of it. Uh, verse 33, So now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. The word so now means he, Joseph is shifting from an explana explanation to an exhortation. What Joseph is saying is, I've told you what the uh, dream means. Now I want to give you a plan of action. And there's a sense of urgency about it. He also says, now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Now, Pharaoh is considered a god. And in, in, a, in one sense, G, uh, Joseph is saying to Pharaoh, uh, you're not smart enough. <laughs> you're not wise enough. You're not discerning enough to actually put this into practice. You need to find somebody smarter than you to put this into practice. Now, that's a pretty bold thing to say to a dictator. Uh, but this is, this is what he suggests. You need to have a leader who will provide the direction for this plan to be implemented. In verse 34, let Pharaoh do this. Let him appoint overseers over the land and take a fifth of the harvest of the land of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. So this leader is going to have people below him 
who are going to implement this plan. And in these seven years of bounty, they're going to have so much uh, bounty that if they take a t uh, 20% of it and store it, that in those uh, seven years, they will have uh, those, those seven years, uh, they'll have enough to last for the seven years of uh, famine. And so he gives them this plan. Then he goes on, let them gather all the excess food during these good years that are coming. Under Pharaoh's authority, store the grain in the cities. I saw a picture of these uh, granaries and it looks like a Kwanzaa hut. And now they, they have preserved them and so they've got some metal structure holding them up. But it, they built these Kwanzaa huts and uh, many believe that they, they occurred during the time of Joseph in order to store this grain. So store the grain in the cities and the cities would be where most of the people would be, the cities would be where it could be most protected. The cities would be the ble ble best place to go in order to distribute the food. So store the grain in the city so they may preserve it uh, as food. They can watch over it, they can guard it. The food will be a reserve for the land during the seven years of famine that will take place in the land of Egypt. Then the country will not be wiped out by the famine. That word is the word that's used to describe the destruction of life in Noah's flood. This is going to not only uh, save people, it's going to save the nation. The proposal pleased Pharaoh uh, and all of his servants. And of course, you know the rest of the story. They appointed uh, Joseph as that man. Now, God gave we'll have some, a chance to talk about the text and uh, give some explanation, further explanations about it and all of that kind of thing. Uh, um, one of the beautiful things about this, about Joseph, is there's a lot of people that can diagnose a problem, but there are few people who also come with a solution for the problem. So Joseph not only diagnoses it, he comes with a very workable plan in terms of solving the problem. You'll notice he has a tax plan. <laughs> he has a disaster relief plan. He has a plan for uh, structuring the authority and the leadership of this. And so uh, Joseph uh, comes with all of this plan. He has careful planning. He says there's going to need to be forceful leadership. Uh, Pharaoh is going to have to endorse this because people are going to be resistant and he wants the overseers to have the authority to make these decisions. And, and you need someone with great organizational ability. So there's just much about this text that you can talk about. And here's how I, I hope to um, uh, apply it. Um, God gave Pharaoh insight for the next 14 years. And a plan was implemented, was made for those years and then implemented. And this revealed trust in God. Now I wanna ask for a volunteer in the class, somebody who will be our example. And uh, finally somebody will testify to that. And then I wanna say, let's think about uh, Ed here and imagine the next uh, 20 years. F for the next 20 years, what are the possibilities that he's going to face? And of course, whatever your age is, uh, that's gonna have a different kind of uh, potentiality in, in the next 20 years. And then after that, well, what are the plans that Ed needs to make in light of these 20 years? And some of these things that we've listed, uh, uh, whatever that might be, whether it's uh, getting married and having children or whether it's planning for your demise and uh, your family being cared for. What, what are the plans that need to happen? Because God has revealed in the normal course of life what typically will happen for us in these next years. Are you thinking about that? Are you making plans for that? Uh, I had read that uh, the average American uh, has uh, something around $15,000 they've saved up for retirement. Trust me, that won't be enough. And if that's within 20 years or longer for you, uh, that may be a plan that you need to be implementing. There's just a whole host of those kinds of things. Now to close the lesson, I just simply wanna say, 
Uh, Joseph trusted God even when it didn't make sense. When you find yourself in confusing circumstances, continue to look to God and trust Him because God reveals His plan when we trust Him. God bless you. Thank you for teaching God's Word.